guys, welcome back to my shitty ass channel. It's about a special type of girl. We call her Carly Still. This door is bugging me, but I can't close it because, like, I have a shoe rack and it's like not letting me close it, and I don't know why. I did have these glasses on, but you could see the ring light in them, and I thought that would like totally bug you guys because it bugs me. So, today I am doing a pre-op Brazilian butt lift info video thing, kind of like that. Um, my nose is super stuffy, and I am sick, so just like, if you see some like snot dripping out of my nostrils, just like, ignore it. And I broke my nail, but it comes in handy anyways, and I'll tell you why. So, um, first of all, if you guys don't like these type of videos, you don't like plastic surgery, you don't agree with it, Blah, 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 you guys probably heard this a million times, then click off of the video, and I don't know why you clicked on the video to begin with. Everyone does have their opinion. If you don't agree with it and you think I shouldn't get it, I will listen to you as long as you are respectful. So you can comment your opinion down below because everyone is valid to their opinion, but do it in a respectful way where you are not saying like, you're disgusting, you're a fucking little bitch, you know? Like do it in a respectful way. Let's get started. Okay, so as you guys may or may not know, I am getting a BBL, which is a Brazilian butt lift on January 19th. That is my surgery date, and I leave on January 17th. So, <laughs> I am going to Dr. Mois Moses Salam Salama. <laughs> I don't know how to say his first name, but his name's Dr. Salama, and he is a very popular certified plastic surgeon in Miami, and I'm going there, and I'll leave all of his stuff down below. As of right now, all of the staff that have been taking care of me are super nice, they're super responsive, they're making me feel comfortable. I had a lot of questions and a lot of things that I was scared about and I called them and um, this wonderful girl named Nancy gave me all of the info I needed and yeah, so I'm just going to talk about the pre-op stuff, um, what I'm doing to prepare and stuff like that. So, basically, um, I sent in some pictures of my body. I did cover myself, but um, I was mostly naked. I sent some pictures in for a virtual consult because I am in Canada and I thought flying to Miami just for a consult was a little bit excessive, especially with the technology nowadays. Like you could do like a Skype call or like anything, you know? So I sent over my pictures and they responded and said I'm a great candidate for a BBL and a breast augmentation. Now, I don't think I'm gonna get the breast augmentation anymore. I don't think I want that. I think I have pretty, I'm not insecure about it. The only reason why I was gonna do it is because I was going under anyways and I was like, let's just hit a double whammy, do it both at once. But now I feel that I don't need it. I'm not really insecure about them. I've never have been. I feel like the size of my breasts are fine. I just feel like the recovery for me would be a little bit too bad um, because I am dramatic as hell and I will, but I probably most likely won't get it unless he tells me that my recovery for this won't be as bad or whatever. I don't know, but as of right now, the only thing that is 100% is my BBL. So that's all I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So um, after I sent in my virtual consult, they said I'm a great candidate, but I needed to gain some weight. So at the time, I was about 120 pounds, and now I am 132 pounds, which is the heaviest I've ever been. Um, a lot of people can't even tell, but I did gain weight. <laughs> um, I do carry weight pretty well. Parent, my mom does too. But anyways, yeah, so I had to gain some weight for my BBL, and I only had, so I did this in November, and my original date was March, but then I was like really impatient and I was like, can you move it up because I'm not trying to wait till March. Like I'm gonna be thinking about this until March because I was so excited. And I can gain weight pretty fast, especially because I'm like, I'm a good eater. Like I will eat Taco Bell every day for the rest of my life if I could. So um, I was able to gain weight pretty fast and I was already halfway to my goal like in December. I was already like 128. Like I gained like six pounds within like two months, which was not hard for me actually. <laughs> And then I was like, okay, like I'll reach my goal by January. They wanted me to get up to 140, but I kind of messaged her and I was like, I don't think I'd get up to 140. I personally don't feel comfortable um, getting up to 140 because I would be doing it in an unhealthy way. I wouldn't care if I was 140 or not. Weight really doesn't matter to me. <clears throat> I never really paid attention to my weight growing up, but the only reason why I didn't feel comfortable doing it is because I don't think I could do that in a healthy way. Like, everyone was like, work out. Like, when I tweeted I need to gain weight, everyone was like, work out. And I was like, I can't work out because I need fat. I don't need muscle. The weight they want you to gain is weight muscle, like the fat muscle, because they are going to be sucking up the fat and putting it into your butt. So the more fat you have, the better. If you gain muscle weight, it's not really doing anything for your surgery. Yes, it's healthier to gain muscle weight, but for the surgery, they want fat. They're not going to suck out your muscle, you know? So they really wanted me to gain fat muscle, and I felt like it was just too much weight for me to gain. I feel like I would feel like I feel like 
physically I would feel sick trying to make myself gain that weight. I could probably do it if I just, as growing up, I mean it might happen, but I don't think I could purposely try and do that. So I was like, you know what? I don't even, and mind you, I didn't want like this huge Kim Kardashian butt. I just wanted a butt because your girl's flat. This was in December and they told me January 19th. And I was like, whoa. And that's when I started getting like anxiety about it. Cause I was like, okay, this isn't like, this isn't like 30 days. Cause it was in December something they told me. It was like around Christmas. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I don't have that much time. Like now I'm freaking out. Before I had three months, now I have like 30 days. So I was freaking out. I booked my hotel and everything, booked my flight, and I had to go get labs. So basically, the first step is, is they said, they tell you what you can and can't do two weeks prior to surgery. So she said, hey Carly, starting January 1st, or Janu technically January like 5th, because I'm not getting it till the 9th, you cannot drink alcohol, you cannot smoke, and you cannot do any drugs, and you can't um, take birth control. So I stopped birth control um, starting January 1st, I stopped drinking January 5th, so I literally waited until the very last day. Like, I got like hammered and then, <laughs> and then I stopped drinking. Um, so I haven't drank since January 5th. And I started taking iron supplements and vitamin C. Is it vitamin C? Yeah, so these are my pills. It's vitamin C. I just got some off of Amazon. And yeah, and I got this, which is iron. So I got these pills just at the pharmacy. They were like pretty cheap, they're like $10. Um, so they want you to take one of each every day for two months prior to surgery. Now because I didn't know I was getting it until like a month before, I didn't start until a month before, but um, I don't think my uh, iron was low anyways because I always get frequent blood tests and I don't think my iron was that low anyways. Yeah, I told them that and they know it's only been a month, not two. I feel like physically I am okay to do my surgery. So they um, send you a sheet on email and it's like a sheet that they want you to bring to your doctor and your doctor will do all those blood tests, lab works, uh, physical stuff like that. So I brought it to my doctor and he did all my blood work. I had to get an ECG, which is like an echocardiogram for your and I had to get an HIV test I had to get a urine sample an HCG level which is detecting your hormones and I think I got like just a regular overall check of my blood count like my everything like you know so I got that and everything came back good and I went to my doctor and he sent, sent a clearance letter so you basically like wrote a letter okay Carly is cleared for surgery she is healthy blah 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 and he sent it over to my plastic surgeon which once again is Dr. Salama and I'm going there to get Salama fied that was actually like yesterday and then they send you prescriptions in the mail and actually I wasn't able to fill my prescriptions because it has to be in Canada it has to be a Canada certified doctor to fill your pres like to write your prescription so i needed to get my family doctor to rewrite my prescriptions i got so i got percocet i got zofran i got basically i got an antibiotic a nausea patch a stool softener and i think another nausea pill so i need to get my family doctor to rewrite those and send them to my pharmacist and then i got them filled that way now as for preparation um you want to make sure you do your you want to make sure that you get your hotel obviously well well in advance and if i were you i would do a do a hotel with a kitchen which was what i did most places offer a recovery house which my surgeon does which is an amazing opportunity they have a driver for you a nurse with you they have other people that just got surgery in the room with you other women and they have like they feed you three meals a day and they basically like are your parents while you're gone and they offer that but i didn't get that because i wanted my mom to come because i'm a little mommy's girl and I also wanted Connor to come, which is my boyfriend. So I wanted my boyfriend and my mom to come and nobody's allowed to stay with you in the recovery house. So I just got my own hotel. I think it's like five minutes away. And um, it has a kitchen and it has and it has all that stuff. So it's good to have a kitchen because you don't want to have to get in and out of an Uber to eat and because you can't sit on your butt and stuff. So yeah, I got a kitchen and it's gonna help me tremendously. Okay, so uh, after I did that, now as for preparation and the things that I bought, Booty Buddy, which is a website for BBL, um, people that are getting BBLs, they kind of do like a recovery thing. They have special pillows for you to sit on and stuff. They sponsored me and sent me their ultimate recovery pack because um, I told them, hey, I'm getting my BBL and I will mention your products if you send me an ultimate recovery pack. So 
they sent me this pack with a bunch of stuff in it and I'm gonna show you guys what was in it so if you guys are getting a BBL and you guys just want something where you don't have to go to the store and like pick out everything individually get this BBL recovery pack they just send you everything in the mail and it's pretty fast shipping I think it was here within like two days and I'm in Canada so in America it's probably even faster they just send you this whole box of things that you will need and you don't have to it saves you time going to the store and buying everything individually yeah this is what was in it so the first thing they gave me was pads it was they're maxi pads so they're just like pads if you're on your period period and stuff i heard that most of the time your body start you start to get a period so if you're not on your if you're not on birth control which i am not right now because of my surgery um after your surgery you will most likely start your period um that's what i heard that's what my mom said and so these will be in handy because i don't want to have a tampon in probably you know that'd be like annoying they give you a travel size toothbrush and toothpaste which is so cute like look it's my little pony like if I came out of surgery and there was my little pony toothbrushes right there, it would like make my day. It'd be great. And then I have an antibiotic cream, which is Biactricin. I don't know what it is. I can't say it. In Canada, we have like polysporin and stuff, so I don't know how to say this, but um, it's a first aid antibiotic to help prevent infection. And I think you just put these on your, um, you just put these on your incisions, I think. And yeah, this would be really good for your incisions, anything. Then they give you uh, BD alcohol swabs. And also, I think this is for your incisions, but I think alcohol on your incisions would burn. So I'm not really sure what this is for, but what I would use it for is to wipe my armpits. Because you, I know you can't shower for a little while, and I'll, like I would want to kill that bacteria in my armpits. So I would put this on my armpits. Um, this is just good to clean up stuff around, and yeah. Uh, the next thing that they gave me were band-aids. So they're just Johnson & Johnson medium gauze pads. So they're not band-aids, actually. They're gauze pads. Which is good, like if I had to like cover my incision before I put my faha on and stuff like that. So they just give you some extra gauze. Um, another thing they give you is aloe moisturizing hand sanitizer. So you're gonna wanna before you touch your incisions, before you basically do anything around your incisions to prevent infection, you're gonna wanna sanitize your hands. So and you are more susceptible to infection and like sickness if your body's already fighting off a surgery. So having some hand sanitizer to prevent sickness while you're in surgery is like great. You're not gonna wanna be like sick while you're recovering like that would just be awful the next thing they gave me are therapeutic compression socks these prevent blood clots and help circulation on your legs because you aren't going to be moving as much because you're going to be in pain um compression socks help with circulation and yeah some doctors and surgeons already give you these i'm not sure if mine will i'm pretty sure mine will um but these are good and handy because you're going to want to switch out your socks anyways especially if you have like ooze coming out of your legs if you get uh thigh liposuction you are going to want to change your socks so while one's in the wash you can use this one the next thing that they gave me was body works scrub and smooth exfoliating cloth this is really good because you can't like really you can't really touch like you can't move a lot so this cloth you could like exfoliate your neck your back stuff like that under your legs without like totally like just moving your body which helps a lot and i think you're supposed to exfoliate and use an antibacterial soap before you go into surgery so that helps the next thing i got was a female urinal and this scares the shit out of me knowing that i'm going to pee inside of something that i am holding literally gives me anxiety i feel like it's disgusting but you gotta do what you gotta do you can't sit on a toilet most of the time so yeah and we're gonna be in the bed in pain so i'm fucking scared my mom's gonna be there connor's gonna be there i'm gonna have to pee in front of them inside of a cup like the next thing is liquid glycerin oh so this is laxatives because you're after surgery it's sometimes people become constipated because all of their painkillers and the pills that they're on yeah. i didn't get a laxative but i was prescribed a stool, stool softener so you might not even need those and then they give you wet ones cleans with natural moisturizer hypoallergenic so this you could use on anything you can use this on your whole body it's safe for babies yeah so it's a wet one like it's you know like from kfc when you're done eating they give you like those cloths that's basically what this is you can use it on your face your mouth your whole body which is good because you're gonna want to clean up you can't wear deodorant the day of surgery you can't wear lotion you can't wear anything so this really helps especially if you can't get into the shower and i think you have to wait 48 hours to get your incisions wet anyways so you're not gonna be able to shower for a little bit you are gonna be sitting in your own nasty fluid you're probably gonna be sweating because you have so many garments on so you are gonna be nasty and having wet ones definitely will help wipe your armpits down wipe your face wipe any cracks and creases you got so this would definitely help 
Um, they also give you cotton rounds. I think this is just to clean up stuff. Um, another thing I got, which are garment shoulder protectors, which are so awesome. So this is their logo. It says, oh, it says booty buddy right there. And um, this you put underneath like right here. So it's basically like bra straps and they are really tight compressing your whole body and if you put these underneath that it kind of stops them from indenting your skin and like hurting you so you put these underneath the straps of your faha so that's good then you got surgical tape and I think this is for like the gauze if you need to put like if you need to put that gauze on and then put some medical tape around it um, to keep it in from your incision from opening this is really good they also give me other stuff that I cannot find so one second I'm missing stuff okay the next thing is these uh, absorbent surface protection under pads, which are so useful, especially staying in somewhere where it's not your own house. I'm gonna be staying in a hotel and most hotel sheets are white and I will be leaking draining. I'll probably be like literally disgusting. So putting these under you um, not only like helps you absorb, it's, it keeps everything clean. You can just like switch them out if there's like fluid on there or whatever. Um, but this is really good if you're staying in a hotel because you are not going to ruin their sheets or their comforter or whatever And these are just really good. You can swap them out You can just lay them under you and whatever comes out of you if there's liquid or blood or whatever you can Just switch them out clean them and yeah, so these are like my number one recommendation like these Okay, so the next thing I got which I'm so excited about is called an anti-roll Basically you put this around you and there's two balls and if you so you're supposed to lay on your side And if you start because when you're sleeping, you're not really thinking if you start to lay on your back Which you're not supposed to do with your BBL um, Which you might subconsciously do while you're sleeping. There's two balls on your back So when you lay on it, they will definitely wake you up because you're laying on hard balls, you know, so I'll show you what it looks like. It's this huge thing and you Put, put this on your back like this so that when you do roll over, you're laying on this and it kind of elevates you anyways and it just wake, wakes you up because you realize, ow, I'm laying on balls, you know? <laughs> the most important thing I got was a booty buddy pillow. This is a pillow that allows you to sit down. I am gonna be on a plane, so this will help me. Um, it is this pillow. It has a zipper so you could like wash this if you need to. And it's a really, this is like really good quality at the bottom it's like honestly it's like I think it's like wood <laughs> like honestly and then there's like foam right here and there's two little slouches for your thighs basically if you wanted to sit on this stool you put your thighs in the creases and then your your butt kind of floats like that so your butt is like floating so you're not sitting on it but you can still sit so if you have to drive go to eat go in the car stuff like that so that is like my main thing I was most excited about because I really want to be able to sit eventually especially if I'm going out to eat and I drive a lot I drive by myself here in my hometown so this really helps and this is quite expensive so what I decided like they just sent me the whole package which I was I'm so grateful for like honestly um, another thing they sent me which I don't know if they send this to everyone I don't know if it's part of the package but this is so cool it's called a booty buddy book a handy to track your journey um, a handy notebook to track your journey it's a cute little pink notebook with this pen and honestly this is gonna help me so much because I am documenting it I can write down notes I can write down when the last time I took my painkiller was and I can write down like when I should take it next I can write down how much fluid I'm draining this honestly helps and I didn't think about bringing one until they sent me one so this is like awesome you could write rate your pain you can like literally write what day you're on, what happened each day. Um, it's good, especially for like your uh, post-op um, appointments. If you have like any concerns, when you're at your doctor's, you can take out this notebook, see all your concerns that you wrote down. You might forget them and yeah. This is so cute, so, I just, I love. They also give you a little uh, pouch for um, your beauty buddy pillow which is good because you know when you're on like when you're in the mall you're not going to be like carrying around this freaking pillow and people are gonna be like what's happening but if you go to the mall and you put it in the bag and put it on your back when you go down to sit down to eat or something you could just take it out and sit down on it and you won't look as crazy you know walking around the mall with a pillow so it's a little uh bag and it says booty buddy on it it is so cute and then it says booty buddy hashtag kit so it's a booty buddy kit you could put stuff in here you could put anything you need you could put your booty buddy in here 
can do whatever you want. So anything that you need to bring, painkillers, anything, you can put in this, so cute. Now these are two things I brought on my own, which I don't really know if these even work. I read online that there's no scientific proof that anti-scar things actually work, but I'm just gonna do it just to do it. So I got Metaderm, which I already had these two things at home anyways, um, because when I was a model, my a photographer was like crazy about scars because he had to edit them out so he was like whenever you get a cut use these so he bought me this I already had this this is bio oil it helps um, stretch mark scars stuff like that I don't think there's any scientific proof with it but it's pretty pricey so like I would just use baby oil honestly but I already had this so that's the only reason why I brought it it's called bio oil I don't know if there's scientific proof I really technically didn't see anything but it helps with stretch mark scars uneven skin tone, aging skin, and dehydrated skin. I think this is just baby oil. Like it literally just smells, looks, and everything like baby oil. I mean, it kind of has like a, a vapor rub smell to it, but. And then Metaderm Advanced Gel for scars. Um, you use it once a day for scars, and I thought this would be good for my incisions, but I don't really know if it's gonna work, and I don't know if I could even put this on until they're fully closed. Yeah, I'm stupid. You can't put them on until they're closed. But that was basically it. Um, also, one other thing, which is why I, why I was talking about this, is my fingernail broke this one, which is fine because you actually have to take off. My surgeon is only requiring me to take off my index fingers for surgery. I have to take off my acrylic and everything because they do put like this thing to track your heartbeat, I think, on your finger. And so I have to take off these two finger index fingers, which is fine because this one already fell off, and I have to take off this one. But I'm gonna keep these ones on because your girl's bougie and you know still wants to look cute after surgery. So that is what happened. That's what's happening. That is my pre-op kind of preparation for this. Um, I also have not been drinking, and you cannot take ibuprofen. I don't know if I told you guys that, but you can't take any like ibuprofen or aspirin. Anything that's gonna thin out your blood, you should avoid um, because it will increase your risk of bleeding and bleeding too much. So yeah, that's my pre-op video. That's everything I am bringing other than clothes. I'm bringing this dress. Actually, I bought this dress for surgery. They want you to be in loose clothing, so. I have like this cute little dress, so it's not tight, and yeah. Um, so go check out Booty Buddy, go check out Dr. Moses Salama. Um, Dr. Salama actually has an Instagram where he shows all of his work. He also has a website where he shows his recovery house, and they're actually doing a discount right now, where if you're a new patient, you get $1,000 off of a uh, mommy makeover kind of thing. You can get, it doesn't have, you don't have to be a mom, but it could be like a BBL and a breast augmentation, and you'll get $1,000 off of that. You have to be a new patient, um, but they are doing a promotion right now, so go check that out. The link will be the first link in the description. You can like look at his gallery, you can see what he's offering, and the first thing that pops up when you go on the page, I think, is the promotion. He's giving $1,000 off um, a bunch of surgeries, so go check that out. Check out his Instagram, and if you type in his name on YouTube, he does have some YouTube videos of him like explaining why he puts in the drain and stuff like that. He's so awesome, and his staff are so polite. So go check that out. Don't forget to check out Booty Buddy. Thank you so much for sponsoring me and sending me this stuff because your girl was not about to go and look for all these stuff individually. Like that would take forever, and I don't have time for that. So thank you. Um, I highly recommend getting the Booty Buddy package, the Ultimate Recovery package, if you are going to get a BBL. Um, and yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy my video. I hope I don't die. If I die, I love you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and stay confident. Mm -hmm. Bye, beautifuls. Cause that bikini with the brown hair I love it when she comes around here Damn, tell me when you come to town We can wear them headphones, baby, no sound Damn, what up, Carly? What's up, girl? Tell me what I gotta do to make you my girl huh. With that Louis Vuitton I can see you at VidCon Stuntin' in the night, gaze,